Hi, I'm Bob from Plastic Pipe Shop and in this video we're going to have a look at the different types of valves you get in plastic pipe systems. The most basic type of valve you get is a double union ball valve. Now a double union ball valve, as its name suggests, has a union either side of the valve so the valve can be taken out of service and put back in fairly easily. A double union ball valve operates on a full bore flow so it has a full bore going through the valve so there's nothing to block the valve at all. If you get any debris coming down it'll just go straight through the valve. It's not very good at control because it's only got a quarter turn from open, completely open, to completely shut. So it's quite hard to control. Next valves we'll have a look at is actually two types which operate on about the same principle and these are gate valves. So this is the simplest type of gate valve which is a simple pull up and a push down. Okay, pull up and push down. Nice thing about it is it's got a four bore flow again all the way through. There is a little ridge in the middle which can catch uh, grit and sand and stuff. And if you've got a lot of grit or sand in your water, it can end up sitting in there and compromising the valve when it's fully shut. But for low pressure systems, um, these, are, these are nice valves. If you notice they haven't got unions on the side of them. They have got a bolt and a nut on here. So you can unbolt the sides and slide the valve out. It's a little bit fiddly. Um, I always prefer to get a union and put a union on either end of these. And then if you ever do need to service the valve, you can just whip the unions off, whip the valve out, give it a quick check, give it a quick service, and then stick it back in again. So the other type of gate valve, which operates on the same principle of a gate going up and down, is this, which is a fine control gate valve. In this one, we've got about eight turns of the handle that's it fully open at the moment. You can see it's a full ball valve when it's fully open. Again, there is a dip in the bottom here, and if you've got any very heavy gravel or anything like that coming down your water, it can sit in the bottom, and that can be an issue, especially in low flows. If you've got a high flow rate going through, it's not so much of an issue, as as you close the valve, the flow whips past the, uh, whips past the blade at the bottom and pushes any gravel out with that increased flow. But if it's a slow flow going through, it can be an issue. So again with this, this has got about eight and a half turns to go right from fully open, right down to fully shut. So um, you can get really fine control with them. Much, much better control, much, much better control than you can with this or, or with the ball valve. Again, hasn't got unions on either side. Uh, you can take the valve apart with these parts at the top here. But I'd always prefer, if I was installing one of these, to put a union either side. And again, you can whip it out, put a new valve back in, whilst you service this valve if need be. Next valve we're going to have a look at is a diaphragm valve. Uh, our diaphragm valves come complete with unions on already, so they're double union valves. A diaphragm valve is the best valve for fine flow control. The valve operates in quite a convoluted manner. If I open it and close it, you can't see any light at all through the valve at all. As you can see, a bit like the fine control gate valve, there's lots of turns between open and shut, which gives you that fine control on the valve. What's happening with the valve as I open and close it is this little riser is coming up and down here, and that gives you an indication of how open or how closed the valve is. Okay, so as you walk past the valve, you can get a really good visual indication of whether well, that valve's open, it's shut, it's half shut, it's, or whatever. The fine control gate valve doesn't have that, it has nothing rising up, up and down in it. So you don't really know when you look at the valve how open it is. So the diaphragm valve works by passing the flow across what's, what's essentially a weir inside. So like a, uh, like a barrier inside the valve. So the water comes in, goes over the barrier, goes down and then comes out again. And then there's a rubber seal which slowly compresses down over that barrier or up. From that barrier and because it's quite a nice wide barrier inside it gives you that nice fine control of flow so every time you turn the valve it's pushing that membrane down a little bit more onto the onto the weir and every time you open the valve it's raising that membrane a little bit the main issue with diaphragm valves um, is they're great in clean water systems where you're guaranteed you're going to get no debris coming down at all if you get any debris coming down, you can sometimes clear it if it's small particles, if it's blocking the valve weir by opening the valve fully, but it's still only a smaller gap across the weir because it's a wide gap rather than a high gap and that's what gives you the fine control. So if you get large pieces coming down and blocking it, you've got to take the entire valve apart 
to strip it down. So they're great for clean water systems, no good at all for systems where you've got any large particles coming down, things like uh, any grass that's getting washed in, or even in lots of factory floors you get um, bits of paper being washed in and things like that, and they can all compromise a valve like this. So it has to be clean water. So the last valve we're going to have a look at is this big beast here, which is a butterfly valve. Okay, It's called a butterfly because of the shape of the wafer inside it. Now, I'll give that a turn so hopefully you can see it inside. They're quite hard to turn when they're not on the system. As you can see, this has actually got something which is physically blocking, in a way, the path of water on the way through. So it's a butterfly shape, so it's got like two wings, it's a disc inside which turns at open or close the valve. Again, a bit like the double union ball valves, it's only got a quarter of a turn between being fully open and fully shut. So it's not great for fine control at all. You can get a bit of adjustment on the control, but uh, not a lot. Most of these other valves we looked at are available in sizes up to 4 inch or 110 millimeters. Once you get over that, you've really got to use a valve like this. You can get some really large gate valves like these. They're horrifically expensive. And again, you don't get very good fine control of them at all. So this valve, having that blade in the middle, can suffer from getting debris on it. Uh, grass or anything else gets trapped across the blade. And then it's quite difficult to shut because you try and shut it and the disc inside shuts onto a seal inside and uh, that's going to stop it from shutting completely if you've got some debris on there. Unlike the other valves which I recommended having unions on, butterfly valves always come with flanges either side. So unbolt the flanges and the butterfly valve can be whipped out and then put back in. But if you've got a real big bit of debris, if you've got a piece of wood or something in there and the valve can't shut so it's sitting open and you physically can't get the valve shut, you're never going to get the valve out because the butterfly part inside is going to stop you from getting it out past the flanges. It's the same with all valves really, make sure nothing big gets in your system. There we have it, that's a brief overview of the different kinds of valve. Um, just one last thing to mention about all of them is the shock on a system. You may have heard of water hammer, which is if you've got water coming down from a header tank, a high header tank, or even from a pump that hasn't got any, uh, um, any control on it at all, um, any speed control, you'll find that something like a, a ball valve and a gate valve, you can very quickly shut. You can really whack them shut very quickly. It's a really quick process. And it's the same with the butterfly valves. You can whack the handle around really quickly. Now, I know that you wouldn't do that, but other people will do that. And the problem with it is, if that's the only valve on the system, and someone whacks that valve shut, you get a shock wave which comes down your pipe, bounces back because the water's hitting that, hitting that shut valve all of a sudden, it's travelling at velocity, it's hitting that valve, and then you get a shock wave which bounces back up the pipe, and that can very often fracture weak parts of your pipe system. To avoid that, sometimes people, people prefer valves like these, where it's impossible to shut the valve really quickly. And that's it shut, okay, so you don't get water hammer at all with them. You can get butterfly valves, which have a gear mechanism on top. So again, a little bit like this fine control valve, it'll be maybe 10 turns of the gear mechanism to close the valve. Certainly any valves above 200 millimeters tend to have a gear mechanism on them because they can be quite hard to open and shut otherwise. Um, and from, uh, from an occupational health point of view, because of the force needed to turn that lever, um, a, gear, a gear mechanism is, uh, is recommended, and it also stops that water hammer. I hope that's cleared some things up about valves. Um, there's more information on our website at www.plasticpipeshop.co.uk. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.